Okay, so today we'll be using a sound recording program that will allow us to record sound waves from our voice and then we'll translate that into Autodesk Inventor and then we'll be able to turn that into a 3D model that can be 3D printed and used as jewelry which makes some pretty cool gifts. So, to begin, open where I will be using a program called Audacity but there are other comparable programs. And to begin, you need to find out that your mic is working. So in here, you can test and make sure that it's working. You can see that, yes, it is working. But I don't want to use that. So you can go ahead and delete that. And right now, you can say whatever you want into it. And it'll record how you project your voice. And based on that, it'll create the sound waves. And that is what it will actually be 3D printed. So, I'm going to say, how are you today? And that's what I will actually be 3D printing for this purpose. So, hit the record button. How are you today? Now, that doesn't look like much right now. However, we do have options for editing, which makes it look a lot cleaner. So you can zoom in, or just, you can crop out the other unneeded areas, which is most of that flat line. So you can cut that. Supposedly. Hmm. Or just zoom in. And basically you just need to get that general shape because that's really what you want. Trim. Okay. So I get this is actually fine for our purposes. So what we are going to do now is take a screenshot. So you can do that depending on your machine, but you basically on Windows 8 you can hold um, the Windows key and then hit print screen. So I have to set the mic down to do that. Now it made that flash, so you know that it took a screenshot, and it will actually be saved in a screenshot folder in your computer. So here we go into pictures, and it loads, then screenshots, and then here it is. And right now we're just in a photo viewer, but we actually want to do is crop it. So I will be bringing it into Adobe Photoshop. So I can do that by exiting out of the viewer and then choosing open with. Photoshop. And what I'm doing in Photoshop is just cropping everything except the sound waves that I want to print. So I believe that is done with crop and just that's just about there. Looks about right. And that looks pretty good. So we can now save this. Just call it wave. I'm going to save this. It uh, any of these. I'm going to go JPEG because I think that'll work best for uh, Inventor. So JPEG, and then I'll just put it in somewhere where I'll be able to find it. That's me. Just standard settings should be fine. Now we can actually start making it 3D. So to do that, we'll open up our Inventor and wait for that to load. And basically, what we're doing is bringing in a 2D image and as a picture and then from there we're going to trace it with lines just 2D lines and then revolve it around an axis so it's actually making a cylindrical shape so we want to create a new part while we wait for it to load
Sorry about the wait. Everything runs slower when you're taking a screencast. If I had a better video editing software, I'd probably edit this out later. It's a big F. There we go. Now it's happy. So you just create a new standard part. So now we can start a 2D sketch, and that's just going to make us a 2D plane that we can work on. Now we want to bring in an image, and in there, what do we call it? We call it wave. So you can just bring in the uh, picture, and don't worry about scaling right now because we can do that later. And uh, yeah, those that's fine. So. Right now, this has no dimensions, and depending on how big you would like it to be 3D printed, see this is 3.6 inches, and it's a pretty long sound, so I'm going to make it, I want it actually to be fully 3D printed, 3.5 inches long. So let's just make that 3.5, and, and it automatically scales. Now, from here, we are going to trace it, and now uh, let's see, and you might be able to try and see if it's yeah you can't you can only change one dimension at a time because it are, is already set at that specific ratio so you can only change one at a time so we're going to now use the line tool to trace but before we can start tracing you need to make a center axis so to do that you want to find the center that the recording is centered upon and then the x-axis for the sound waves because that's what everything will be revolved around. So you want to go ahead and cross and make that axis. Now, start with a point on the axis for the line and then follow the general shape of this sound wave. And you do not have the precision with the 3D printing to get everything. So you basically just want the general curve. How specific you want to get is really up to you. So you just go along and making sure that everything connects back to that center line. Because if it doesn't connect to the center line, then it won't like revolving it the program itself won't like it. So everything needs to come back to the center line at some point. So, and f after that's done, you need to make a little rectangle in the uh, corner, and that'll make it a nice plane for us to work on for making the hole. So now that we have that done, we have the 2D work that is completed, and now we can begin the 3D work. So the tool we'll be using to do that is the Revolve tool. And that's basically taking regions that are um, going to be revolved. And you can see here you want to choose the profile, and then that should give you grade areas for which you would like what you would like to revolve around. So you can see that that's what you want your axis to be. And you want to select all these profiles. And now you can actually see your work starting to become 3D. And that's, that's those are actually sound waves. However, you might say, there's nothing that's going to be holding those together. How is it, are you going to do that? So you, ba so you need a, a center core. And to do that, on that word, that little rectangle that we added, we are going to use that to add a um, to add a cylinder that goes all the way down. So that'll give it some support. Some support, excuse me. So we can start a new 2D sketch along that face, and just add a little circle right there, and then just 
you want it somewhere where it'll actually be able to provide support for the structure, but not so much where it'll mask any of the sound waves. You don't want it to cover any of them. So once you finish that, you can extrude, and we want it to go in the other direction. We do not want it to cut, and we want it to be three and a half inches long. And then, there you go. There's, and each cur one of these curves is part of your sound waves. And you can use these fillet tools, or yeah, you can use the fillet tool to round the edges to your liking. I'm not going to cover that in the video because I'm almost out of time here. But <clears throat> with this, you can change, you could maybe make it a little shorter, or depending how you would like it, you can change the sizes. And from there, you can just do how you would normally 3D print something, which is print, then 3D print service. And then from there, it'll generate an STL file, which you can upload to your 3D printer. I hope that this makes sense. If it does not, you can leave me a comment, and hopefully I will get back to you soon. Um, thanks for watching.